Hi, it's Gary Ray Smith, The Knitting Man, and this is episode eight, how I convert a drawing to a knitting chart. Hello and welcome back Um, in this episode, episode eight. uh, The plan is that uh, today you will follow my progress as I transform the hair that you saw me sketching out last week. I'm gonna convert that into a chart for knitting. So uh, we're gonna follow that process right the way through. And then later on in this episode, we'll also have an update on my um, off-piste feral vest. Uh, But first of all, um, we are going to uh, look at um, my cat um, baby blanket. And um, I've done a little clip here where I show you from the initial sketch all the way through to the chart. So just so you can see the process and then later on we're going to do the process with the hair. Okay, so um, in in the last episode, we were um, I started to draw the hair, um, but since then I've sort of collated all of the stuff together. It's we, we're missing one picture, but when we get to that, I'll talk about it. So um, I've collated all the stuff um, only because it was relatively recently if I've been able to find all the stuff. But this is all the stuff. Um, that is the progression of what became my last blanket which was the cat uh, cat in the flowers so um, I woke up once and I I normally do it every Saturday morning I sort of lay in bed and I think about um, ideas and and then I get up and I draw an idea and I try to do it every Saturday morning. I don't know why I pick Saturday because I know obviously Saturday I won't be working. So this here, Joe, if you can come in on that, that's the first one. So I woke up on a Saturday morning and I did that drawing. So that was the first thing that I did. And then that drawing became that sketch. So I roughed it out larger and it became this painting here. So what I've done, it's quite loose and I've used a thick brush so the marks are quite thick. So that I'm I don't want to I don't want to do it too detailed, I don't want too much detail, but also This is roughly the same size. I know that this is roughly going to be the same size as the finished, or in actual fact, I've probably scaled it up so it's the same size as the finished graph that I want it to be. And there was another one of these in between, but somebody saw it on Instagram and asked asked me if they'd sell it. And, And so that painting, the painting between this one And this one has been sold on Etsy. So that's a drawing which is a a more detailed version of this. And then obviously after that, I've taken this drawing and I've got my big sheet of graph paper and I've painted it. I don't know how well that will show up because I've I painted it in a a, a um, copper coloured, so it's there's a reflective in it, a watercolour. So can you see that? I don't know how good you can get a picture of that, Joe. So that's my 
painted chart that took me about um, three mornings, I think, to, to paint that. And if I got, while well, you're there, yeah. So what I like is I get, I get, I was talking about the tins and I collect tins up and you can see this is just an old, is that tobacco? Yeah, that's a cigarette tin, Sweet Afton. And somebody at some point had hooks in there, probably in their shed had hooks in it. And I like to put my watercolours and I buy odd watercolours and things and I put them in these. So there's a um, very limited colours and I put them together in colours um, that I like and then, you know, work on things with, with that limited colour palette. Um, so that's the watercolours. So then obviously that then I scan this in and I've got like a heavy duty A3 scanner. Um, and then obviously when it gets printed, I darken it up because uh, these lines can be quite thin. So I have to darken it up, which darkens the whole thing up. So that's why I paint it quite thinly. I paint it um, so that you can still see the lines through so that when it gets printed, once it's darkened up, you can still work out what's what's um what how many squares there are so that's how the finished print looks but that's how the uh i scanned from that darkened it up in the computer so that you'd still be able to see the fine lines but i'm very much aware that if i darken it up too much you can't see but i think you can count uh, all the squares anyway so um, so that's the finished thing. So the original drawing, which was in my sketchbook, over a period of about a week or so, two weeks maybe, and I've lost it. So that drawing became that cat chart. So of course, what I didn't show you in that clip is uh, what the finished blanket came out like. Well, you might have seen it in um, earlier episodes, but if you haven't seen the earlier episodes, uh, this is this is how it came out. Um, so. As far as I know, there's only one person working on that pattern at the moment, um, and that's Haldis. Um, if you don't follow Haldis, um, she's called Haldis Bergen, um, and you can follow her. You'll be able to find her through my Instagram, uh, where I put up um, pictures of her work. Um, and I, while I'm at it, I'd like to say a big thank you to the three people that I know have finished the knitting my... Um, my bluebird blanket um, and they are Haldis. Linda, she's called Knit Linda K on Instagram and Jill in Australia, uh, she's called Hank and Pearl Store. But all of those, if you look at my Instagram, you'll be able to find them because you're my, my work that I will have shared their work on my Instagram. And so now we're going to go to some clips of me as I chart up my drawing for my hair blanket. So this is the sketch that I was doing last week and I'm pretty happy with it now. I've put a flower up there in the V, which obviously that'll get lost if the if it's made into a V-neck. Um, so I've tried to keep away, but that, that can go over the edge anyway, so that's okay. And I've left that space there because I was talking about wanting to have a bit of space in it. So that's that. And I've just transferred that image uh, with a light box. It's actually called a window. So I put this on the window and then I traced that through the light coming through the window. So this is just a quickly traced version of that. And what I'm going to do, and I've just asked Joe just to come and film this for a second is I'm just going to use a really thick brush. So I'm using a really thick brush to fill in round these. 
and what that's doing because the brush is so thick it's going to take out any fine detail and then I can go back to my drawing and see if anything's not going to work so I will then refer to this and then I'll tidy up this drawing um, before I transfer it onto the graph paper so if you just want to just watch me do a bit of painting then that would be fine Joe and I'll just the, the worry is when you get down to this fine stuff like around this eye and stuff like that but I allow myself to use the tip of the brush so you know with this mouth I can come in there I can I can use the tip of the brush I can but having a big brush to begin with is the main thing and sometimes I find that that there's not enough when I've done this there's not enough detail and I have to kind of go back to the drawing board or, or I find that there's something that I've made too small in that drawing and it's not going to work so it just allows me just to just to thicken everything up and try and gauge whether it'll work in knitting because the tendency is to put far too much detail in you've got to take as much detail as possible when you're trying to convert a drawing to a knitting pattern So do you get the idea there, Joe? Is that enough? Yeah? Okay, so that'll do for now. I'll come back when I've finished filling this in, yeah? Okay, so um, I'm finished there. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and I've not made any any real changes to this to be honest but then again this was something that I'd previously worked on in this manner so you know you wouldn't expect me but but sometimes I go through lots of changes but I'm pretty happy that that is going to that's going to work that's going to be knittable so now the next stage is that I'm going to I'm going to take this drawing the only thing that i really did was i i felt like i needed to thicken up that line there um and i've changed a couple of little minor things but not very much so i'm now going to transfer that drawing using my window light box method onto graph paper and then i'll ask joe to do a little bit of filming of that Um, so um, this is the front door and um, what I've done is uh, on the window on the front door I've stuck the uh, drawing of the hair and um, which is there and then I've over the top I've um, lined up the graph paper and now what I'm doing is I can see the drawing through because it's bright sunshine outside so I can see the drawing through the graph paper and I can trace the hair onto the graph paper so that's what I'm going to do now are you filming yes okay so I'm just I'm just finishing off here really and I'll, I will still make lots of decisions when I start filling in the graph 
I'm just going around and just checking that there's nothing I've missed. And I'll tidy it up and start painting it. So that's that done. Uh, so I'm back in my studio, so that's the original drawing there. And I've transferred it onto graph paper, trying to get out my shadow out of it. Transferred it onto graph paper there. And while I was at it, I also looked at the amount of stitches there were so that it will work as a blanket. So I've made it so that it will work with the rib that I like to use. So that's it for now. And I'll start painting, get Joe to film me doing a bit of painting next. Um, so this is probably um, as far as we're going to get in this episode because this is going to take me an awful long time and as you can see I've started to fill it in can you see the shine on it Joe mm -hmm. and um, I'm filling it in in this um, goldy color here this one and um, just sitting here and it's going to take hours and I'm listening to Janice Ian because she makes me feel really relaxed. And um, I'm making lots and lots of little tiny decisions. So people often say to me, how do you decide um, if something crosses the line? How do you decide? Well, there's no right or wrong answer, really, I think. Um, so if I'm if I'm filling in um, a a square and the square is half and half, then I've got to make a decision one way or the other. So, but you know, I, I'm on automatic pilot because I've done it so much really when I'm doing it. But I don't think there's a wrong or right answer which, which sides of the box you fill in. But generally, if there is more of one color on one side of the box, then that becomes that color. So it's just a, it's just a long plod of a job really, but I like it and I just can't get completely get lost and, and just keep going for hours on hours. So next week we'll um, come back and hopefully I'll finish that chart. We're very busy this week. Um, we've got an awful lot on and you'll see in our next episode uh, why we're so busy um, but hopefully yeah when you come back next week well, I'll have that chart done and uh, we can look at where we go from the, for there um, so um, there's not a travels with my yarn this week well there is but we only got as far as the garden um, I think you heard Arthur shouting up the stairs to me um, in uh, the last a clip that you saw the clip or two that you saw there and um, he was really anxious to get some seeds in the ground because uh, I bought him a load of seeds so uh, he wanted to be potting those so we've got a clip now for travels with my yarn we're traveling all the way to the garden um, and hopefully next week we'll be further afield um, so here we are travels with my yarn in the garden planting seeds with Arthur that's it, not too many in each one. How are you getting on? Good. Now we're planting, what are we planting? Money maker, tomatoes. tomatoes. Fine tomatoes. Okay, it's here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You're gonna help me? Yeah. Earth on them now, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Oops. I'm just dropping it all over the <laughs> table. Which ones do we want to do next? Pick up some more seeds. They're all there. Do you want to do? Yeah, I want to do it on the... <gasps> no, let's do some grab this. Let's okay. see. What... Oh, what does that say? 
Uh, three to four. Are we on three to four? Yeah. March. Wait, can we do some reddish? That can I? Mm -hmm. Can we do some reddish? What else have we got? Courgettes. Should we try courgettes no, as well? Reddish. Yeah, first. we're going to do, we don't need all them radishes, so we're going to do courgettes as well. Hang on, I've got three radish. Three radish. This is good, right? Eh? Right now we need to we need markers, Granddad, so we know what we've planted. That's those tomatoes. Right, okay, Granddad's gonna come around to do it. There you go. Ten, Ten centimetres. No, that's how tall they grow. Half to one centimetre. That's, that's not very much. So that much? Okay, yeah. Where? Well no, just put them in and we'll just put half to one centimetre of soil on top. Yeah? Yeah, that's it. Put a. Uh, that should be. How many you make you doing? You do um, one side courgettes and one side radish. radish. Oh, really? Yeah, are so they, you don't get them Are they going up. indoors? Courgettes, can they go straight outside? No, we're putting it all indoors, Granddad, on the windowsill somewhere. Okay. Now we're doing courgettes. Right, remember we one courgette in each in each thing. Right. What's this side? Well, we'll put that with the radishes. Yeah, that's, not, that's not awesome, Mum. Courgettes. Yeah, no, just put your. Finger in. Don't put too many in because they need space, don't they? Put them in there. They need space. Right, we need to make markers now. That's courgette, and that's a radish. Okay, that's that one. And then that one's tomato. Yeah, good. That. And that can go in the middle there, like that. Then can you use that? Good. That's a bit too much. You actually get it off. Right. right. Here they are. So you're gonna put one in. Right. Put one in each hole oh. then. Oh. I'm sorry. We're doing um, a couple more, aren't we, Grandad? We need two more. I can see the pumpkin seeds. Okay, we'll go and get the other packet of pumpkin seeds. There's no one. That's all of them, isn't it? What is that, man? Go and get the other packet. That is a very short amount of pumpkin seeds. That was definitely a four because it's big. Yeah. All right, let's put these ones in. Weird color, but okay. It's like a yellow color. Yeah, that, that one. In? Right, get top. another bit of earth and put it on top of them all then. That's enough. Well, that was a bit too That's much. That's all right, it'll go out. All done? Yeah. Lovely. Right, they can go on the windowsill then. So there you go. That was uh, travels with my yarn for this week and we got as far as the garden. We'll see next week how far we get. Um, you'll, um, you'll see how keen Arthur is on gardening. Um, I wouldn't take too many tips. If, you, if you're here for gardening tips, you're probably in the wrong place and you'd be better off at Gardener's World and looking at something by Monty Don or something. But uh, we we did our best. Uh, anyway, we uh, oh, cup of the week before we go any further. And after last week's massive cup, I've got a tiny little dainty cup this week. Burley Calico. Quick swig. So now we're going to do questions and answers. And um, first of all, I've got a question for a question from Heather, um, and she's just bought my um, my cat poster. And uh, so she's got some questions about um, casting on 
what needles I use and um, the rib. So there's the cat poster. So that's 162 stitches across there. Now what I generally do is I cast on 30 stitches either side of the chart. So 162 plus 30 and 30 is 222 stitches. So you need to cast on 222 stitches. And then she, she mentions needle sizes. Now, generally, I use a three and a half millimeter needle. Um, so when I've knitted this, I've knitted it all in a three and a half millimeter needle. Now, um, when I'm knitting a jumper for the rib, I'll knit the rib on a smaller needle because I want the rib to come in slightly. But with these, with my tension, I find that the rib works out, if I use the same size needles as I use for the knitting, the rib works out to the same tension as the knitted part, if I use corrugated rib. And then you need to knit 24 rows of the corrugated rib and then you will after that you will knit 30 stitches of rib and then you'll swap over to knitting from the chart and when you've done your 162 stitches of the chart you'll do another 30 of rib so you'll actually have on the back side you'll have 60 stitches of rib in total um, so I hope that answers your question Heather and uh, the next question is from Adina and she says I wonder if Mrs Smith would enjoy a shawl knit by you I think that's in response to me saying that I've, I've not really knitted or anything um, but there are things around she could wear if she wanted to um, unfortunately she's seen that question and she does want me to knit her a shawl. And so um, I think in future episodes, that might be a project that we go into. Uh, I've asked her to start thinking about exactly what she wants. And so we'll plan that one out. And maybe when we finish one of these projects, I wanted to do something in Tarsia really, because I'm obviously, I'm doing um, two stranded color work projects. Um, so next time I'd like to be doing something in Tarsia, um, but maybe that's that's it. So uh, when I finish either the hair baby blanket or the off piste um, farewell vest, I will probably do Mrs. Smith a shawl. So thanks for that, Adina. That's uh, given us an idea going forward. Um, the next question is from Words Can Inspire and they say, am I correct in thinking that you knit in the round and then afterwards steep the shaping at the top of your tank tops? Um, sometimes I do um, and sometimes I don't. I would say more recently I've, I've gone for a, a built-in... I think I mentioned it last week. I've gone for like a built-in rib. So it's it's all one, you know, there's no, so there's no uh, finishing afterwards. It's just done. Um, and I, that's something that I'd like to explore more. Um, maybe do it in a different way and just see what I like. But... Uh, yeah, that's something that I, an integrated rib is something that I, I like, I, you know, just it, it, I just like being able to just cast off and it's done, you know, so um, that's, that's something. So do, do, sometimes I steep when I get to here and, but more recently I've been interested in not steaking. So um, I go... So I tend to, I knit round, all the way round, and then come back, purling, and then I knit, and then I purl back, round again. 
So I just keep going backwards and forwards, knit and purl, until I get up to the shoulder. So I tend to do them both together as I go along, or, or the three parts, one, two, three, together as I go along like that. Okay, thanks for that. Um, Lolly Lou says, may I suggest you cover your window a bit, filter the light so there isn't glare on the left side of your face. And yeah, it drives me mad. It was raining about 20 minutes ago and we've got this south facing window and when it's raining, I've got the blind pulled up completely here and then... Um, and then some come, some comes out and I'm squinting. It drives me mad. Um, we are, you know, we, we've got very basic equipment. We just started this. We're just using Joe's old iPhone here. It's like an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 6 to record these videos. And I said to her, when we got to a thousand subscribers, that I'd buy her a nice new um, camcorder. But um, yeah, I haven't bought it yet. So uh, she's still waiting on that. Um, but uh, yeah, we are, you know, we're, we're using primitive technology, if you like. Uh, but yes, it's something that we will improve over time. It's just, you know, it's early days. We've only been doing it for less than six weeks at the moment. So yes, thanks for that anyway. Uh, Paula, would you please give your opinion on colour dominance? Uh, are you a believer that yarn must be carried to the left on top or and on the right on the bottom or are you with Arnie and Carlos who swear it doesn't exist they say it's about tension on the needle um yes I think yarn dominance is a red herring I don't my my hat that the dominant yarn would moves all the time so sometimes it, it the so if i if the colors move all the time between my fingers they don't say it, stay in the same place so when i'm knitting if i've got you know a red yarn on top and a white yarn on the bottom you know within a few stitches they'll have swapped over so they they're swapping all, all the time so um yeah i don't I don't, it's not that I don't believe it. I, you know, you can, you can see that it actually exists. Um, but I think I said I might've been in episode four or something, answered a similar question. Um, it really doesn't bother me. It's something that I, you know, I'm, I've got no interest in whatsoever. I just, you know, I just do my thing and I've done it for years. And if I started to worry about things like that, then, you know, yeah things might take twice as long or whatever it's but you know generally yarn dominance no i've got no interest in in um i've, I've watched videos of people like explaining and showing you how it how um how it turns out doing it in the different methods but yeah i'm i'm with arnie and carlos all the way on this one Carla, knitting with boots on, says, do you chart anything out before you start knitting? No pattern, no floats, but how do you get the motif to fit without having to rip back if you don't do some math first? And I think what she's talking about is, and I'm, I'll have to show you. Sorry, I had to go and get my knitting there. So this is um, the Fair Isle vest that I'm working on and there is the join mark there so i i start working which direction i'm knitting in from where you are don't know so i start knitting and then when i come round to there i just wherever i am i just stop and start the pattern in you and down that line there I don't care what happens. So there's going to be a seam down here. Well, it won't be a seam. You won't notice it. But there will be a seam down here where the patterns end and finish, but just on one side. So hopefully that answers that question. <laughs> so last week we asked what you would like to see in future episodes. 
and um, fortunately for me, getting my yarn back together came out on top. So it's that is a project in itself. So I've got two projects ongoing at the moment, um, which is the feral vest and the uh, hair baby blanket. But and also we've pr we've potentially got another project, which is um, knitting a shawl for Joe. So um, and then so in the queue as well now is um, building a home for my yarn stash. So that's great. Um, and uh, Joe building IKEA shelving, flat pack shelving, uh, came second, I think. So that's great because uh, we'll do that as well in the future too. So uh, just quickly, this is the update on the um, the vest that I'm knitting. And uh, I was talking about um, last week, I started to do these like curves and how it started to look to me like um, egg and dart, uh, which is a, a, a pattern. And um, I've kind of continued with that and I've sort of continued with the same colours. So I'm sort of blues and greys and blacks. So that's where I am. And it's almost it's almost like fish scales. But every time I um, start a new pattern um, and I'm trying to to mix it up quite a bit. So every time I start a new pattern, I'm, um, you know, maybe doing like a three five or a, a seven nine or something like that. And then the following, I, I might do three nine or something. So. I'm trying to, so they're not the same. So the patterns are different. And then we're, we're going to have a band across here, just below the arms, which is going to be sort of lighter. So the background will come in lighter as well as the foreground. Um, and it would be mirrored uh, below and above that area. Um, I'm still not sure um, how I'm going to knit the top half when I get to the arms. Um, but we'll decide nearer the time. So that's it for today. Um, if you don't already subscribe, please subscribe because um, that will encourage us to make more videos. And uh, please like this um, episode and uh, hit the bell button as well. That would be great. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.